Welcome to Redefining Medicine, an intimate and personalized program that illustrates a different side of the practice of medicine. Our in-depth conversations will focus on the physicians and practitioners who are redefining medicine through their integrative, functional, and holistic approach to health and well-being. Our special guest today is Lee Frame, Executive Director of the Office of Integrative Medicine and Health at George Washington School of Medicine. We'll be back with our interview right after this brief message from our sponsor. Hey there, listeners. It's your host of the weekly podcast, Redefining Medicine. I have a question for you. How much time do you spend ordering functional lab tests for your patients? Ordering from multiple lab companies for hundreds of patients can quickly turn into hours of admin time. But there's a new way to order lab tests that I'm excited to share with you. Rupa Health is a tool that lets you order 20 plus specialty labs in a single portal. You can order all tests you normally do from companies like Dutch, Vibrant, Genova, and Great Plains, and so many more. Imagine you're ordering a hormone panel for a patient that includes tests from three different labs. You have to log into three different websites to place separate orders and then come back weeks later to check tracking number and download results. Rupa eliminates all of that by having all ordering, tracking, and results in a single place. And they also handle invoices, tracking shipments, automated follow-ups, personalized instructions for completing tests, and so much more. The best part about Rupa, it's free for all practitioners. Go to rupahealth.com, that's R-U-P-A health.com, to join a live demo or sign up to see how it works. Now let's get back to today's show. Welcome to Redefining Medicine. We are so pleased to speak with Dr. Lee Frame today. Dr. Frame is a health, wellness, science, and medicine expert who is building an integrative medicine research program at the George Washington University School of Medicine and Health Sciences while directing graduate education programs. She is also the co-host of the GW Integrative Medicine podcast and co-founder and associate director of the Resiliency and Wellbeing Center. Welcome, it's so nice to have you on the podcast today. Very glad to be here. Well, great. Can you tell our audience a little bit about your inspiration that led to your research of bringing both nutrition and immunity together? Yeah, so actually my inspiration came in, in waves. It started off that I was raised in an area in which everybody had a garden. And so I sort of understood the importance of nutrition from growing things and seeing it being grown. Um, but it was just kind of, it stayed as that as kind of a hobby. And it wasn't until I was in my master's degree studying immunology that I had a lecturer come in and tell me about uh, the Armadillo model of tuberculosis and vitamin D. And all of a sudden I was like, wow, nutrition can be a hard science, mm -hmm. which is not what I had thought about previously. I thought, you know, well, nutrition is over here and science is over there, but they are the same thing. And so at that point, I applied for my PhD and, and really uh, took my love of nutrition into my career. Okay, that's really interesting. So what recommendations do you have when counseling others about healthy eating? Do you have any particular daily habits that you enjoy and recommend to others? Yeah, so I'm all about personalized nutrition, so you have to make it work for you. But there are a few rules of thumb that I have that I, everybody can do. The number one most important one is to eat the rainbow. So get a lot of different plants, diversity of plants. I try to get at least 30 plants a week is really the goal. Um, and then the other one would be to really make sure that the, that food is coming in food form, in the form that your grandmother would recognize as food, right? Mm -hmm. So we're, now we're talking about great-great-grandmother probably. <laughs> um, so not processed foods. And if you can do those two things, everything else kind of falls into place with some exceptions. For instance, vitamin D, you probably need a supplement. Mm -hmm. Well, that makes sense. Can you share with us why the plant-based diet is the way to go? Do you have any simple recipes that you enjoy or would like to recommend for our, the audience here? Yeah, so a lot of the things that are good for us and good for our gut microbiome come from plants. Mm -hmm. So having the majority of your diet be plants is really, that's how you do that, right? You're getting mm -hmm. all the different nutrients, you're getting the fiber and everything that your gut microbiome needs. Uh, and in order to do that, you really have to focus your diet on plants. Now, how do you do that practically is a whole other thing. Uh, one way of doing that is to have things like bowls or salads that you have kind of just handy. You can do meal prep mm -hmm. and you can have them kind of like 
set up for the week and then maybe add in a few different things here and there to spice it up, give it some variety. Uh, keeping things on hand, and one of my major tips is frozen vegetables. Mm -hmm. uh, when vegetables are frozen, they are frozen almost immediately after they are picked. So in many instances, they actually have more nutrition than the fresh version that you would buy at the grocery store because it had to go on a truck and then it went in the grocery store and then it was just sitting there for a while and then you brought it home and it sat yeah. long. So it's this whole process. Um, so having frozen vegetables on hand can always make it easy to throw something together quickly and that way you've got some good nutrition. Yeah, those are great tips because sometimes when you want to eat healthy but you're tired at the end of the day and then you have to throw a salad together and cut up all the vegetables, right. it's just it's it, a it lot might of not happen. Yeah. Right. So it's the meal prep for sure. Um, what are some challenges that you hear from people about adopting a more plant-based diet? I think time and convenience are the number one uh, biggest concerns. And that uh, also uh, cost. People are concerned about the cost of things when it's cheaper to get you know, a, a loaf of Wonder Bread and, and some lunch meat and call that a day. Um, I would say though, we have to think one about long-term investment, right? So it's worth putting a little bit more money up front. And that being said, that there are less expensive options. For instance, if you get, um, you know, a bag of frozen vegetables, some rice and beans, now you have a real meal that cost almost nothing. Mm -hmm. And you could even, you know, make batches of that. Uh, but the other thing being the convenience. So the planning ahead is, is sometimes hard. Meal batching really helps with that, having things on hand. And then I think also trying not to get too in routine because that's something we're doing to be convenient, right, is having this routine. Mm -hmm. But then you need to have the variety because otherwise you get bored of it and it's not fun anymore and you don't really want to do it. So keeping yourself motivated, I think, is another important piece. Mm -hmm. That's a great tip. Um, what is the role of vitamin D as an immune modulatory hormone? Is this something that most people should incorporate into their daily diet? And what doses would you suggest? Great question. So I already alluded to that a little bit. Yeah, vitamin D is really important when it comes to the immune system. Mm -hmm. It um, Basically, it allows the immune system to function as how it should. So having enough vitamin D allows it to function at baseline, looking uh, out there, seeing if there's something out there that needs to be attacked, right? Some bad bacteria or something, um, but not overreacting. And then um, the same thing, you know, turning off the immune system after it's done its job. So really important. And in order to get enough vitamin D, it's really difficult for me to answer the question of what the right dose would be because it has to be personalized. Mm -hmm. You really have to see what your current blood status is and then titrate. So get the right dose to get you up to the right level. And typically we would recommend 40 to 60 nanograms per milliliter as kind of the optimum dose. Okay. Um, so working with your healthcare provider, getting them to that level with whatever dose that needs for you, because it's going to depend on your sun exposure and all sorts of other factors. Mm -hmm. So when were you introduced to A4M and how are you enjoying the 30th annual Spring uh, Congress so far? So I'm a relatively newbie to A4M. Um, only this year was my first conference. Not, to, not this one, but I attended a previous one a few months ago. And prior to that, I had just kind of heard about them through the grapevine, and I work with Andrew Heyman at GW, okay. and he had talked about all the wonderful things they were doing, mm -hmm. and that this was actually kind of the inspiration for our master's degree program. So I was aware of it, but I hadn't got to fully experience it, and I have to say it's been really wonderful. Great. Do you have any other tips you'd like to share with our audience today? Sure. I think um, two main tips, stress management and getting enough sleep. Okay. Uh, so, Giving yourself some time to relax, whatever that is for you, if that's taking a bath, it's going for a run, and maybe it's different from day to day, mm -hmm. uh, those are really important and you have to prioritize them, right? Put your oxygen mask on first. Mm -hmm. And then the other one be, and this is kind of related, is giving yourself enough time to get restorative sleep every single night. Sleep will never be wasted time. It's time your body is healing. It's time your memory is, is working. It's time your brain is actually working through problems. So don't view it as wasted time and make sure it's a priority. Okay, those are wonderful tips. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank you for having me.